Good day everyone. It is nice to see you again. Welcome to our any learning as our learning community. Lesson 4. Critical Care Nursing. Artificial Airways. Airway management may be indicated in patients with loss of consciousness, facial or oral trauma, aspiration, tumor, infection, and copious respiratory secretions. Patients in the intensive care unit often need mechanical assistance to maintain airway patency. Types of Airways. Oropharyngeal airway, nasopharyngeal airway, laryngeal mask airway, combi tube, endotracheal tube, and tracheostomy tube. 1. Oropharyngeal airway or OPA, a curved plastic or semicircular or tube like plastic device inserted through the mouth and positioned in the posterior pharynx to move tongue away from palate and open the airway. Usually for short-term use in the unconscious patient, or may be used along with an oral endotracheal tube. Not used if recent oral trauma, surgery, or if loose teeth are present, and does not protect against aspiration. Position patient on side and suction oral cavity frequently, to prevent aspiration of oral secretions or thomatus when an oral airway is in place. Indication is when a breathing spontaneously but unconscious. It prevents the tongue from falling back against the posterior pharynx and allows to suction secretions. Two. Nasopharyngeal airway, or NPA or nasal trumpet, a soft rubber or plastic tube inserted through nose into posterior pharynx. Measure from the tip of the nose to the tip of the ear and always look at diameter of nostril before insertion. It facilitates frequent nasopharyngeal suctioning. It should be use extreme caution with patients on anticoagulants or bleeding disorders. You should select size that is slightly smaller than diameter of nostril and slightly longer than distance from tip of nose to earlobe. And check nasal mucosa for irritation or ulceration and clean airway with hydrogen peroxide and water. 3. Laryngeal mask airway, or LMA. It is composed of a tube with a cuffed mask-like projection at the distal end, inserted through the mouth into the pharynx, seals the larynx and leaves distal opening of tube just above glottis. Easier placement than ET tube, because visualization of vocal cords is not necessary, and provides ventilation and oxygenation comparable to that achieved with a net tube. It cannot prevent aspiration, because it does not separate the GI tract from the respiratory tract, and may cause laryngospasm and bronchospasm. Four. Combi tube, a double lumen tube with pharyngeal lumen and tracheal esophageal lumen. Pharyngeal lumen has blocked distal end and perforations at pharyngeal level. Tracheal esophageal lumen has open upper and lower end. If the patient is outside the hospital and cannot be intubated in the field, the emergency medical personnel may insert a combi tube. The tube rapidly provides pharyngeal ventilation and it functions like an endotracheal tube. One of the two balloons around the tube can be inflated. One balloon is large and can be inflated with 100 milliliters of air and occludes the or offerings. The smaller balloon is inflated with 15 milliliters of air and can effectively occlude the trachea if placed there. Breath sounds are auscultated to make sure that the oropharyngeal cuff does not obstruct the glottis. Patients can be ventilated through either port of the tube, depending on its placement. 5. Endotracheal tube. A flexible tube inserted through the mouth or nose and into the trachea beyond the vocal cords that acts as an artificial airway. Endotracheal tube maintains a patent airway. 
allows for deep tracheal suction and removal of secretions, permits mechanical ventilation. Inflated balloon seals off trachea, so aspiration from the GI tract cannot occur. Generally easy to insert in an emergency, but maintaining placement is more difficult so this is not for long term use. Six. Tracheostomy tube. A firm, curved artificial airway inserted directly into the trachea at the level of the second or third tracheal ring through a surgically made incision. It permits mechanical ventilation and facilitates secretion removal. Can be for long-term use. Bypasses upper airway defenses, increasing susceptibility to infection. Allows the patient to eat and swallow. Nursing care for patients with artificial airways. General care measures. 1. Ensure adequate ventilation and oxygenation through the use of supplemental oxygen or mechanical ventilation as indicated. 2. Assess breath sounds every 2 hours. Note evidence of an effective secretion clearance, raunchy, crackles, which suggests need for suctioning. 3. Provide adequate humidity when the natural humidifying pathway of the oropharynx is bypassed. 4. Provide adequate suctioning of oral secretions to prevent aspiration and decrease oral microbial colonization. 5. Use clean technique when inserting an oral or nasopharyngeal airway and take it out and clean it with hydrogen peroxide and rinse with water at least every 8 hours. 6. Perform frequent oral care with soft toothbrush or swabs and antiseptic mouthwash or hydrogen peroxide diluted with water. Frequent oral care will aid in prevention of ventilator-associated pneumonia. The patient's lips should be kept moisturized with petroleum jelly to prevent them from becoming sore and cracked. 7. Ensure that a septic technique is maintained when inserting an endotracheal or tracheostomy tube. The artificial airway bypasses the upper airway and the lower airways are sterile below the level of the vocal cords. 8. Elevate the patient to a semi fowler's or sitting position. When possible, these positions result in improved lung compliance. The patient's position, however, should be changed at least every two hours to ensure ventilation of all lung segments and prevent secretion stagnation and atelectasis. Position changes are also necessary to avoid skin breakdown. And 9. If an oral or nasopharyngeal airway is used, turn patient's head to the side to reduce the risk of aspiration because there is no cuff to seal off the lower airway. Thank you for listening. Have a good day and be safe. Agyamanak.